Hey everybody, welcome to C3 Church Global Podcast. I have a really great, joyful day today, talking to my own son, Joseph, about church planning. He's starting a brand new church in C3 OC, that's Orange County, California. Great to see you, Joe. Great to be here. <laughs> great to be a part of the podcast. Yeah, and great to be part of the army of yes. church planners all around the world. Amen to that. Starting great churches. Um, so what are you doing to actually get the church underway? What are the steps you've taken? Um, yeah, so <clears throat> out there, there, there are a lot of ways to start a church. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we were adamant on was that uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want us to start a church that was in a box. Um, because I do believe there is a uniqueness to uh, each person who is planning a church. Right. So it's it's kind of difficult to put it into a sum that works in a very broad setting. And um, I, I have loved uh, looking at all of the, the different models that are available and the resources that are available to plan a church. Um, but one of the things we really wanted to do was not start with a big bang. Right. Um, You know, growing up around you and knowing the story Mm -hmm. over and over again, there's something about the boomer planting of churches that I absolutely loved, Mm -hmm. which was the call came and then we put an ad in the local paper and we started running Sunday services. (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, what's the budget? What's this and that? And, you know, and so um, instead of going down this line of we're going to do uh, a night that introduces ourselves to the the people in the area. Um, instead, we just wanted to start in cafes right. and uh, restaurants, just Amazing. by just by meeting people. Beautiful. Um, and so we started doing that. We moved into the area uh, to Orange County five months ago. Right. And then uh, just every day, sit in a different cafe, meeting people. We obviously had some people that we were connected with in the area, which is great. Uh, and then we started having uh, what we call tables. Right. Uh, basically a dinner party, as everyone would know them. Um, but we launched that with a Friendsgiving party and then a dinner party series, uh, which was Dreaming with God. Mm-hmm. And then we finished the year with another uh, Christmas party. Amazing. Which had uh, around 50 people yeah. who were there and we prayed over everyone's dreams. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Well, you know, um, the dinner party concept, I think Josh Kelsey in New York City, C3NYC, now called The Fount, actually got that rolling. And before that, they were known as connect groups or Mm -hmm. house churches. But I thought a a crucial element that was sometimes devalued was the eating together part of uh, fellowship. And actually, in the New Testament, it's the agape feast. It's the communion right. that Paul talks about. I mean, we've reduced it to a little wafer and a small cup on, on, on a Sunday. But actually... But it was a spread. Yeah, it was a, just a big old spread right. of food. And I think you could, you could put it up there along with prayer, reading the Word, and mm-hmm. fellowship, just eating together. So powerful. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, people come together over food. Right. Yeah, it, it's it, it breaks a a barrier of right. formality, right? And so people come a bit more humanistic, yeah, to it, you know. Yeah. And so, um, not only that, but then I think uh, there's there's a lot of in betweens in the Bible, right? It's not adding to. It's not. I'm not trying to throw some different words in there, but it talks about all the time Jesus was having dinner with these particular mm-hmm. folk. Yeah. Some people were annoyed. Right. Others were taking note and they were seeing it. So I think there's a lot of ministry that happens yeah. around the table yeah. that we might not even recognize as happening, like laughter. Yeah. Laughter is medicine for, so, uh, for a hurting heart or for a disconnected so heart. Yeah. And it's it's an overlooked factor. It's it's like well we've got to get to the formal side of mm-hmm. the liturgical communion, right? And then we've got to um, make sure we have a a sermon. Mm-hmm. And but sermons can also be preached by just the way sure. we're acting. And well, we've got three chapters in John where Jesus is just having pizza with his his disciples in that pizza. upper room. Wow. Well, I, I, <laughs> 
Could have been. <laughs> they yeah. want to take out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said, this is the last supper. Right. And so I'm going to talk. He talks about the deepest, mm. deepest stuff about all kinds of when the Holy Spirit is coming and the conviction of sin and what's going to happen to him. So it was, it was, it was powerful and it was around food. So now you, you're doing that and you're also doing digital work as well, aren't you? Online. On, uh, yeah, so we, I mean, we did a online launch and um, that was, uh, you know, about a month and a half mm -hmm. after we had started meeting right. with people. And it was, it's kind of like um, behind the ball, <laughs> yeah. which, I, which I kind of like because right. it was, it was less like we're going to rely upon our online yeah. to then bring a crowd. Right. Instead, I'm going to rely on meeting people. Right. And... Um, this is probably the only time that you kind of get to choose right. which people you are really pouring into. Sure. Uh, and those that are, are coming to those dinner parties. And hmm. um, and so we, we, we wanted that option. Best time to do it straight away. You know, like Jesus right from the start chose his 12. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like halfway through, oh, I should pick up some guys to figure out what I'm doing. Right, right from the start. They saw everything mm -hmm. so they could model it, you know, all the way through. But in the digital space, I've seen you a few posts on Instagram, et cetera. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your goal with, with social media? The goal with social media is keeping people updated, mm -hmm. I would say, but also getting uh, people connected. So right. I would say Orange County is kind of like a um, – <laughs> It's it's a little Texas belt, right? It's a little bit of a Bible belt within California. Once you get um, south, it, right. it's, it's kind of called, for lack of better terms, the red curtain. <laughs> and so you you cross down Orange County and San Diego, yeah. and so there are a lot of um, people who I would call believers, right? But not what or Christians, right? Even, even as far as, but I would not call them disciples, right? And so there's a lot of floating people. There's um, a, a pretty strong, what I'd say, religious temperature. Right. Um, and that is exciting for me. Yeah. 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 I, 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 it helps. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I love to, you know, I, I would rather break molds. Yes. Than um, having to work with ones that already exist. And right. so the, our goal with social media would be to reach in. Right. Uh, those people. Right. Who are stuck in a limbo and provide an agitation that provides a spark. Yeah. That provides a fire. Yep. Because there's a lot of what I'd say, like box checkers. Yes. Been to church. Yep. Got baptized. Yep. Take communion. Mm -hmm. Went to Christmas and Easter services. Yep. Bloodless <laughs> Christianity. Right. <laughs> like, like, uh, it's, um, Unfelt. me. Yeah, meat already wrapped in the wrapper. Right. Um, and so it would be uh, getting those people connected. Right. Um, those who are interested in right. being a part of a new church. Right. Getting connected and meeting people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you already you got your, your philosophy of ministry worked out with your church. You've got seven, what you called seven pillars. Yes. One of them is worship, right? Because yes. you've also called... You've promoted your, your, the church as a worship movement. Yes. That's part of it. Maybe, what, 50% of, of what you've said we're going to be. And you you obviously have written a bunch of songs. You were our worship leader in church for a long time, helped produce maybe over 10 albums. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so songwriting, musicianship, worship, I would imagine is going to be deep in the blood of this new congregation. Yes, yeah, I mean that that is the hope. I think it's the base call of every Christian is mm -hmm. to be a worshiper. Mm -hmm. And that's not just in the form you know there's the great expression of singing. Right. You know, um it's in the Bible, right. it's written all the rejoice, lift your voice, lift your hands and surrender. But um I think worship is uh it obviously is much broader mm -hmm. than just oh we come together to sing a song. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's communal surrender. Oh, so much, yeah. And uh, I, I think we can get a little mixed up sometimes with it being the greatest performance. 
yeah of what the the better song the mm -hmm. the better sound and mm -hmm. i'm into all of that mm -hmm. like, don't get me wrong that you know we write great songs they they are put together really mm -hmm. well um but at the same time you know worship as uh, one of our pillars mm -hmm. is an overall surrender of right. our lives right you know because um i mean you know you know this but it's in the old testament it was the priests that made the sacrifices right. they were bringing the worship mm -hmm. to uh to god they brought their lamb or mm -hmm. cow or whatever it mm -hmm. was but then the priest made right. the sacrifice yeah he, he offered the incense to god mm -hmm. and in in the new testament it says i've now called you as a royal priesthood awesome Mm -hmm. And so it's it's the age old. And it's the same thing that you know people check boxes off. I heard my word from my minister. Right. Okay. So I'm done now. Mm -hmm. But that's that's not it. Mm. It's meant to equip you. <laughs> it's it's meant to equip you. Yeah. And also ignite something in you that mm -hmm. you would go home and search the word. Right. That you would go home and ignite a prayer mm -hmm. in your what that you would go home mm -hmm. and ignite worship. Yeah. You know, I, well, man, in you know, when Israel was coming out of Egypt, the command was let every man take a lamb for the house and put the blood. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. every father, <clears throat> every husband was called to be a priest that day mm -hmm. and put the blood of a lamb, the Passover lamb, yeah, which is when Jesus. So I kind of think that really does apply to us in. Today I as well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. fathers in their yes. homes can be like a priest to their family. Yes. What do you What do you think is in the origin days is the most important factor uh, for a church? I would say the the worship experience. The worship. Exactly what you're talking about. I would say that if if the worship feels like the gate of heaven, mm -hmm. like I touched heaven and heaven touched me, mm -hmm. I wasn't just singing songs. But I, I got to another level of consciousness. I became aware of the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then that juice kind of feeds into your spirit, sets you up for the whole week. Yeah. You're, you're anointed. You, you, you don't really quite feel it all the time, but you know that since I had that experience, it anchors you for the days ahead. And in any problem, it's a much easier thing to look away to God on the inside of your spirit. Yeah. And say, God, uh, if you've already made contact. Right, right. And that's like, yeah, the Psalms are awesome. Yeah, for, for totally. That, where, where it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because mm -hmm. um, you can't, I can't explain to you mm -hmm. what a taste is like. I can't mm -hmm. say this is what a banana tastes like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll be like, what? <laughs> i got to give it to you, yeah. right? And then, and then you experience it, you taste, and you see that the Lord is good. Yeah. No, and, and I like that because it's not taste and see that the church is good. Right. But, yeah, that the worship was amazing. Yeah, that, that, mm. taste and see that the worship leader was awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It was taste and see that the Lord yeah. is is good. Totally. And that's the uh, beyond just the extension right. of a well-produced service. And like I said, all behind that. But if it's if it does not have the juice, right. yes. then you walk away and it was like an inspiring mm. thing. <laughs> this, is, this is a really important point because I've been in small startup congregations that are trying to be like a big congregation because mm. there's 10 people on the stage and four singers and, and there's like 30 people in the congregation. It's kind of overkill. It doesn't, doesn't work. And I think it's better to be synonymous with your environment and maybe just have a guitar player and yeah, a singer awesome. doing a really good job. Yes. Then ten people doing a pretty average yes. you know, job. And I think that's the meaning of the word excellence. Right. Achieving the best you can with what you've got. And and if you've only got three musicians, then or one, just a guitarist up there. Yeah. We started a church in New Zealand, just had a guitarist. Who was, sometimes it was, was, it, I was about to say it was you, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, glory. 
had to give that away. Uh, yeah, some some people who I were better. Can you imagine broken. this? I could set you up, bro. Can you imagine there were some people who could do a better job? They came along. <laughs> oh, all right, here you go. You know, and but your mother, she was the she was the worship leader, and there's very few who could do. You know what she did, right, but um, right, right. Uh, so uh, that was. I mean, we we have got a worship background mm -hmm. in our family, and it's been important. And it's the only time everybody in the congregation gets active, right? And I've asked. You know, I've done surveys in our congregation for the last forty years, and at various times. And you know, I'm, I'm, you, you feel like you're a pretty good preacher, that you're okay, and you ask the congregation, "What do you really value?" <laughs> Never value. Never once. Never once. Oh, oh. Well, that gives me. Yeah, yeah. But, but the worship, always. Always. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the friendship and the community and yes. the vision, all of that. What people value, why they come, why they stay, I think uh, the worship factor has a big part of it. And, and the first person to kind of put on staff, after maybe an administrator, manager, PA sort of person. You mean the first person you hire? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be a worship person. A worship person. To raise up a whole worship team. Yeah, right. Volunteers, and singers, and to tap all that talent that's in the congregation. Yeah. Yeah, that, um, that uh, looking at a small room mm -hmm. with a large uh, worship team, mm -hmm. I, I'm 100% I, I'm in agreement. If if David could worship God with just a heart, yeah, and demons would flee, yeah, then then why shouldn't we mm -hmm. be able to mm -hmm. as well? And uh, I th I think it brings, especially at a church planning level, a unsustainable right um, uh, level for the weeks to come, right? Because uh, the one thing I learned being at C three LA under Pastor Jake and and Nicole, who were brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, we we planted, uh, I guess, two campuses. Mm -hmm. um, and the one thing I realized was you never look at your launch Sunday as a finish line. <laughs> and I kind of in, innately yeah. was like, we made it, guys. Yeah, we right. made it. And then it was next week. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing. That's like thinking your wedding day. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it's going to be like this forever, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> right. But, um, but starting, I, I do like growing uh, your team with, because, because you're starting with a certain level of character mm -hmm. that you want to grow as opposed to I have low character, high responsibility, and bam, there it is on top. Um, and that's a lot to carry for yeah. an early team. Yeah. And there's already going to be so many other things that, oh, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're going to encounter right. over and over that to worry about, you know, convincing people to serve on Sunday because the first Sunday we wanted to start real big. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Rather yeah. build the character of people. Totally. Yeah. Bu building the church is building people. Right. I mean, it's not building a building. And an administrative system. Uh -huh. It's actually so. Whenever you think of building the church, if you're going around building up people, I think you're you're building the church. Okay, so we've got one, the big one, the, or one of the big ones is worship. Yep. And you got these. You got another six. Yes. Let's go quickly through that. Yeah. So, um, well, obviously the Bible. Right. So Bible is at the top. That is our first and last authority. Perfect. And so we don't we don't waver. Uh, from that, right? Even even in awkward conversations over the years, being in LA, there's, yeah. there's a whole lot of different cultures coming yeah. together. And that provides for incredible conversations. Yeah, I don't call them difficult ones; I call them great ones. Yeah, well, I've seen you have some very courageous conversations, <laughs> or heard you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so we don't want to waver from that. I don't yeah. want to. I, I don't want to bring philosophy or, you know. Things from the side, society doesn't inform right. the decisions we make as a church, but right. the Bible does. Right. And so uh, we stand on that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is living and active. Mm -hmm. 
And so we want him in the midst of everything that we do. We say, for instance, we don't have a prayer meeting right now, but every meeting mm -hmm. is talked about as a prayer meeting. Okay. So um, we don't, like I said, have a specific, right. we're, do, we're having a prayer meeting right now. But uh, for our dinner parties, it's said a portion of, right. is a prayer meeting. Right. And so we'll break off into groups. There's about 20, 25. And they would break off into groups of three and four. Right. And then we'll pray over pray, one another. Pray, yeah. And then we'll pray in, in community uh, together. I think that's kind of cool, you know, because I'm not sure there was always prayer meetings. In the New Testament, I think church was... Right. prayer meeting and we we very quickly departmentalize areas of the church that should be the whole church like a worship department yeah. an evangelistic department sure and so there's like three people there who are going to do the evangelism of the whole right. church apparently but right. actually the whole church needs to be in prayer yes in evangelism and if we can kind of mobilize that that feeling that the culture of the whole church is whenever we come together, we are a prayer meeting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and not just personal. Right. Personal prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a, a thing right now is mm -hmm. uh, what is your personal prayer life like? Your, right. Your personal devotion and Christianity is sometimes getting split off into right. disconnected right. Uh, journeys. Um, but the communion of the church coming together. Mm -hmm. Like what we're saying before, with meals, with prayer, right. with worship, right? That it's not, it's not uh, based on everyone meeting mm -hmm. alone outside, of, right? But coming together, right? I think it's important, and to me, that's a lot of what the Holy Spirit does. Okay, sure, it it, it it's personal, yeah. you know, in the morning when you're praying. Uh, my prayer life used to be a bit more marching right. around, and yeah. now it's a bit more. Um, Quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Uh, because I felt like God said to me, shut up. Yeah. And listen. Yeah. And um, and so uh, I, I get that, that little drop mm -hmm. that you were talking about. But then when everyone's together, there's something totally very special yeah. about that. Oh, and, it's powerful. And, um, and so, but the pursuit of the Holy Spirit is, is uh, a big one. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, we don't want to shy away from it. He's not. He's not the weird drunk uncle that you don't invite <laughs> to to your Christmas party. That's, that some that's, churches, uh, right? You know, kind yeah, of like, yeah, oh, we don't want that guy. We don't want him turning up. No, <laughs> I want him. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, and then uh, generosity. Yeah. Generosity is uh, not just limited towards finances right. we want to be generous in our finances right but we also want to be generous with our time yeah with our joy yeah with our resources some yeah. of us have different types of resources it's amazing how generosity with your finances spills over into your attitude right so i've found that people who are genuinely generous with their resources are very forgiving people mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not fault finding they overlook other right. people's shortcomings yes. and faults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think having that sort of expansive spirit comes from a generous people. Do you think that the financial side is one of the last frontiers that people meet or it's it's more it's a personal? Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I, it's one of, if it, it may be, but it's one of the last things to go in people's lives, I've found. Gotcha. People, if they slide away from God, often, you know, their prayer and their church attendance will stop. But I found sometimes they will keep tithing. The giving still goes. Yeah, you know, and then eventually it might. But then a revival, which Malachi says, he, he was trying to revive people. And they said, well, we come to church, we do all this stuff. He said, how should we be revived? He said, tithes and offerings. Right. He says that'll bring you a revival. Right, right, right. So the windows are closed. Which oh. is worship. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> you know, totally. That's, that's a that's a high sign of worship. Mm -hmm. High sign of surrender. Yeah. yeah. And it's so it's counterculture to everything that let's call it the economy of the world right. and, and the economy of the kingdom. Lay right. down your life yeah. and I'll give you a new one. Yeah. You did, you'd never hear that. No. You would not hear that out, no. out in the world or and well, you don't hear of leaders dying for their followers either. 
they're generally trying to rip them off right. or whatever. Right, right, right. But uh, Jesus comes, he's, he gives his giving. Right, right. And that's that uh, that reverse side of it mm-hmm. where um, the kingdom acts different to yeah. the world. Where the, yeah, world totally. where the world wants, you know, what are the three? Sex, money, power. Mm-hmm. And yet the pursuit of the kingdom is going to be faithfulness. Mm-hmm. It's going to be um, generosity mm-hmm. and it's going to be humility. Servanthood, yeah. Yeah, servanthood. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, and so being generous in all of those areas, um, we, we want to be that. You've got enough preaching here to stock up for the first year. I think so. <laughs> all of this. So what's the next preaching? The next one, legacy. Okay. Um, so we there's, there's uh, a few points to that, but children. Right. Um, okay. Our our children in America are, are under attack. Right. And we want to fight for them. Good. Uh, we yeah. want to fight for their minds, fight for their hearts, yeah. fight for their futures mm-hmm. um, that could fel- be felt like it's been squandered. Mm-hmm. I believe in the local church so much that mm-hmm. blessing, that favor, that multiplication comes from it. When there yeah. is a thriving church in yeah. a community and that community is... Uh, absolute subject to Christ, mm-hmm. that there is blessing that flows. Out totally, of that. sensational. And so uh, we want to we want to be building for the history of tomorrow mm-hmm. is is what we would say. Mm-hmm. And so that is our children. Yeah. <laughs> plus, plus it's like um, there's a deliverance generation, and whenever there's one of those, the devil tries to kill all the kids, mm. like Moses, right, right, when right, he was right. born. As a deliverer to actually kill the one the devil tried to just take out the entire generation yeah right and it's the same when jesus was born hearing commanded the death of all these kids yes it's unbelievable yes the horror of it all those poor mothers Mothers looked at it that way that's interesting yeah you know but both of them came to be saviors of their world Uh deliver and set free people and so i think part of that attack it's it's got a more I guess, serious, you know, uh, calling on all, all churches everywhere. 100%, 100%. To be protecting young children, you know, and without, you know, um, taking a, a, a wrong angle on this, it was the boys that that the devil was after in Moses' time and in Jesus' time. Right, right. And uh, they just wanted to destroy male uh-huh. rising. Uh-huh. And because uh, there was a deliverance. Amongst them. Yes. And so anyway, good job. What's the yeah. next one? Uh, the next one, uh, the table. We talked about yeah, the yeah. table. Yeah. Um, and then the, the lo- and, and those, when it says the table, um, we, we want to provide tables. Like I said, Jesus spent a lot of his ministry around right. the table. Right. If you can call it a table. Sometimes yeah. it's on a beach. You know, right. He's cooking breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Such a foodie. <laughs> he was. He was. He was a chef too, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we we wanna we wanna create tables of prayer. Right. Tables of discipleship. Right. Focused. Tables of communion. Beautiful. Tables mm-hmm. of fellowship. Mm-hmm. Of of fun. Right. And um and that would bring it to the last the last pillar that we have is uh, high joy. And so that, that it's funny because a lot of I, I I haven't looked through and it's not right or wrong, but I put a high uh, high level on on joy, right? On fun, yeah. Joy, deep joy is different to high joy. Deep right. joy is I'm in a fight and I'm still <laughs> gonna be happy. I've got it. Through this right. perseverance has been developed, you know, with grit teeth, and I love that. <laughs> love that joy but at the same time high joy mm-hmm. is um having fun mm-hmm. and uh like I said before laughter is a medicine for the soul yeah yeah i i can imagine jesus goofing off with his yeah. disciples oh totally in between you know it says they journey from here to there yeah and you look at us it, 25 miles yeah and so yeah I, there were these times where jesus was get behind me satan and totally but they loved him Yes. And I think he was an enjoyable person. He was attractive. People yes. were drawn to him. Ah, and, totally. And so I think there was that thing of like, so, I want to be a, I want to be around. I want to be around him, that yes. kind of guy. Yeah. Whenever they come into the house and you can hear them in another room, you want to get, get into that room. Yes. Because yeah, that yeah, person's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, obviously. He was magnetic. So, uh, Joe, 
where do people go to find out more about C3OC? Yeah, so uh, you can go to c3oc.com. You can follow us on Instagram, which is C3 Los Angeles. Uh, C3 Los Angeles. Well, that's good. Yeah, no, go to C3 LA as well. But you can follow along the Orange County journey, uh, C3 Orange County. Yeah. Um, and you'll you'll see us moving forward in the yeah. next year. Then we'll be getting into a, a closer succession of organized meetings yep. as we run up to probably an official launch looking at April, May. That's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. And uh, and so, Joe, we're praying for you, believing with you. And if anybody wants to help out, Joseph uh, and Christine, as they launch out, uh, you can send uh, an offering or any support to uh, the account that you'll find on their website. Yep, yep. You can give through our website. You can get in touch with us uh, through our website, Hello at c3oc.com and uh we'd appreciate any support we'd, we'd appreciate your prayers too uh your words of encouragement please send them through uh as we adventure exactly. on this. and if you are listening to this and you don't have a pastor and you're in the area and you're not in church at this church you're welcome yeah we'd love to see you there Amen. and uh, uh if you are in a church please stay there support your pastor Amen. be strong and uh Let's build a church together. Thanks, Joe. Amen. Thank you.